Great. Uh, I would like to know something from you. Do you have any idea how many private universities are there in Bangladesh? Any idea? Yes, how many? 132. Any other? 107. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, 107, 110, 109. Fine. That's not my question. My question is, do you have any idea how many public universities are there in Bangladesh? Any idea? Uh, for my students, because you must know, uh, you must know the job market, you must know the real world that you are going to face. Forget about it. So may I ask you, do you have any idea how many students complete their graduation each year from private and public universities? Any idea? No? A uh, study says near two lakhs. And the biggest number comes from national universities. That is five lakhs. So in total, each year, near seven lakh students complete their graduation and enter into the job market. And they do have a common saying. They do have a common want. What is that? I need a job. I want a job. A study was conducted by British Council, uh, uh, British Council Economist Intelligence Unit with the help of World Bank. And it says near 47% Bangladeshi graduates are unemployed. What's the number? So if I want to divide this whole auditorium, near half of you will not get that job because of the job market scenario. On the other hand, a few days back, I was reading an article, uh, reading an article from a daily based newspaper, the Daily Hindu, and it says, Bangladesh became fourth remittance generation source for India. It means how many Indians are working in Bangladesh. I'm a corporate trainer from Career Coach Training Solutions. I do work with different corporates, different industries. So I have visited textile industries. I have visited banks. I mean, different industries. I have conducted training programs. And I have found Really, a lot of Indians are working in Bangladesh. Even a lot of Sri Lankans are working in Bangladesh. What about our own graduates? As I do have very good close tie with HR community, so I do ask, why don't you recruit our own graduates? Why do you go for outsiders? You know what? I used to work for a university called Monash University. And I was heading a department, enrollment department. The moment I left the job, it was replaced uh, by a woman, Bangladeshi. Once she left, they could not find a replacement from our country. So what they did, they hired an Indian. I mean, I used to work for a position. Now a man from India is working there. My immediate senior position, COO, once that gentleman left and they did not find the replacement from Bangladesh, they hired another Indian. And my group CEO was Indian. And once he left, they found another CEO from India. It means corporates, they are actually struggling to recruit qualified graduates. On the other hand, we are saying, we are shouting, we are screaming, I need a job. I want a job and our students are not getting a job. So what's the problem behind it? Once upon a time, there, there was a joke in USA. They used to say that if you want to become a CEO in USA, you must not be Indian. Now the joke has been changed. If you want to become a CEO, in USA, you must be an Indian. Why? Why is that? If you look at Google, if you look at Nokia, if you look at MasterCard, if you look at, I mean, Adobe, top Fortune 500 companies, they are having CEOs from India, our neighbor country. What do they have and we don't have? So, so the same thing, I asked the same question to my hatred friends 
and they do have answered that we do not have quality graduates to represent our company in global arena. So what's the problem with that? Let me share a few things with you and statistics. A study was con conducted by Harvard University and Stanford Research Center based on successful people. And they have found that if you want to become successful in your career, 85% of your career success depends on people skills and only 15% on your technical knowledge. Another study uh, was conducted by Carnegie Research Institute and it, uh, they have found that if you want to become financially successful, forget about job that you might say, okay, I'll not go for job. I will go for entrepreneurial journey. So if you want to become financially successful, your financial success, 85% depends on the way you lead, the way you communicate, the way you work with the team, you come up with innovation. And shockingly, only 15% with technical knowledge. So what is that people skill? Your 85% success, success depends on that. The other name of people skill is called soft skills. What is that soft skills? If you dig down, the way you communicate, the way you solve your problems, the way you present, the way you come up with innovative ideas, you work in a team, you organize, you lead people, your interpersonal communication. Why did you learn that actually? Then, uh, you know, you might have seen some of my videos that I have been working with daily starting a project where we have been work, uh, I mean, offering some courses on soft skills, I mean, 10 top soft skills. But ultimately, if you want to really learn something on that soft skill, no classroom can teach you. So how do you learn that? Yes, that's why Eastern University is unique. You are lucky that you are student of a university where you do have 23 clubs. For example, consider this event. Those who are the leaders of different clubs, I was uh, hearing his speech, for his speech, you have been working since last night to organize this event. Yes. So while organizing this event, you had to, I mean, prepare a planning budget, you had to convince the management, say convincing management, you had to communicate, a lot of issues you had to solve, problem solving, organizing thing, students are coming here, they are being volunteering. So see, these are the things ultimately soft skills. And how do you learn those? By getting involved with extracurricular, co-curricular activities. In your interview board, you'll be given certain situations. For example, you are graduating from business. Once you face interview in an MNC, or uh, for example, one of my clients is uh, IDLC Finance. By the way, uh, just last month I, wa I was ha conducting a training at IDLC Finance and I found suddenly one of Eastern University students came to me. So uh, I was a student of Eastern University. Wow, that's great. She was having, uh, I mean, major in finance. It's great. So if you want to do job there in your interview board, they will be asking some questions in terms of real life business problems. So you'll be given a case. Once you are still, I mean, involved with business club or you do have business club, right? So once you are involved with business club, if you are given a case to solve, I believe you do have workshops on case solving. I believe you do have case competition. I do believe that you do have idea, uh, I mean, uh, presenting competition. So if you take part, most probably you didn't win, but ultimately on that particular situation, you'll be able to present more, I mean, more than three to four ideas with thought analysis and other things to solve the problems. Bingo, it means that you can easily win that interview board. But those who are not getting involved with this co-curricular, I mean, club activities, ultimately they are getting deprived of. So you are lucky that you are students of Eastern University and you got that, I mean, you're getting that opportunity, right? You are a student of uh, engineering, for example, sorry, they are from CAC or Triple E. See, if you get involved in computer club or robotic club or engineering club, you'll have to organize some projects competition, 
or programming the moment you get involved that helps you to learn something that outside of your curriculum most probably they are aligned with the curriculum that you need to pass in the exam but in club you do have that and uh, i must appreciate the initiatives from eastern affairs and eastern university that you do have everything here to prepare yourself for the upcoming job market now you need to come out of your shell and take a little bit extra effort to prepare yourself for the real world and real world what is that yes your technical skills of course your mindset so whatever the mindset you do have that should be positive growth oriented mindset not fixed mindset you might have a very general i mean average background but that doesn't determine what your future should be ultimately your future oriented mindset should be that growth mindset how is that whatever the background you do have that doesn't matter but if you try you can change it you can build your own path and you do have a lot of examples you do have a lot of examples so how to prepare to win that job market from now on there are certain things of course you must have good cgpa be active in class first focus on that with that because that's the ultimately entry point to cross the gate then also if i ask you what are the things you do have to write on your on your resume apart from your educational qualification that is your certification from different workshops that is your involvement with different competitions that is your involvement with different club activities once you do have all the components to add in your resume your resume actually stands unique because there are places that you will not be able to reach but your resume will go and uh, what should be your res uh, i mean in your resume these are the things because your resume will be considered as the as your marketing tools and you know the marketing tools right later part in, for interview you need to focus on certain skills presentation is one of them english language this is the unique skill you will need whatever the subject background you do have that doesn't matter because your interview your competitors are global they are from india they are from sri lanka that's the statistics i shared with you so if you want to win that part you need to develop those so this is the right time you do have different club as well as different initiatives from the university different foundation course to develop your linguistic competency so you need to consider that isn't it then for the corporate challenge of course you are ready for that thank you thank you very much for inviting me actually the moment i came here i uh, i was feeling that uh, i came back my home so when sir asked how are feeling i said yeah a feeling like home for me i worked here for a long time i know these days whenever i go to for example last week i had a training for shanta asset management and i found one of stan university graduates is working there uh i visited because uh, i mean uh 15 days back i had a training with uh guardian life insurance and one lady very, very young lady came to me sir i was a student of eastern university when i was crossing airport to go to to go to malaysia i mean in airport i met a girl works for a bank from eastern university so that's a good thing so eastern university is not limited within the campus with is not limited within the country i had the pleasure you were lucky that you are part of that journey i had the pleasure to lead some teams to china india i know students those who visited india eastern university sent students to southwest eastern university sent sent students to china i mean for covid yeah it's been four years things are locked but the things will resume soon and i heard that some of the students are moving to japan for internship it means that you are not local only if you want you can be part of that international movement the moment you cross that immigration that will help you to open up to learn things for the future ultimately so grab the opportunity whatever the opportunity you can take from the university and prepare for the real challenge at the end of four year ask your